Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, the first goal is to unlock the NERVA, the LVN atomic rocket motor, which is something I haven't used in a very, very, very long time, so I'm sort of eager to get to it. Uh, in both this series and in my, uh, in my 0.25 series, uh, this is somewhat of a goal and a turning point, so that's one thing that's in common with, the bo uh, both, with both series. Uh, I'm just about 11 units of science shy of being able to research it, uh, so we don't really need that much science. And we're not really in alignment with any planets in order to make a transfer like that, so we really need to do some more local science. And I think the best way to do that is to uh, use an aircraft, specifically a drone. And so let's turn to the space plane hangar and see what I've cooked up. And here is my very first uh, aerial reconnaissance drone, or scientific research drone if you'd like. And it is the very first time I've ever used this. Uh, it's not letting me right click on it. Sensor ray computing nose cone. I know it's for at collecting atmospheric data, it says so right in the description, but I've never used it because I didn't really want to stick in the atmosphere when it came to my previous series and it was relatively easy to get science from everywhere else. But uh, this time, this time I will use it for the first time. One scientific instrument that I have not deployed before. And you can see I've got uh, graviolis, which uh, are relatively recently unlocked, a thermometer, and even a seismometer because we can take that reading on the runway, which we haven't done. I've got banks of batteries because I expect to be flying this both in daylight and at night. Uh, in which case uh, we will need the batteries because the solar panels won't be able to help. Um, also transmitting data will cost something though I don't know how much, we'll have to see. I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, I haven't used this nose cone before, it might cost a lot of science. It doesn't really say. There's no, uh, th th uh, there's no description about how much science each of these uh, send per pack. So we have these commutrons and they say packet size, bandwidth how many mitts, uh, but these don't say how many mitts they're going to send back. That's sort of an important piece of information, right? We, uh, we, uh, yes, we need that information. These should say how many mitts they send back, uh, or give some sort of range, maybe, or multiplier, a multiplier would be good. Uh, let's say it send, needs more mitts to send information back from somewhere like Joule instead of like the moon. Well, then uh, just a multiplier will give us a basic idea of how much that is so that we know how much electric charge to pack because these things require a certain amount of electric charge per packet. I have no idea why you would need to use these other two when this one is like the most efficient one by a mile. Anyway, so uh, this is our drone. You can see that it's not only for atmospheric stuff but uh, potentially for orbital stuff. But let's test it out first because I don't know if it even works. It's possible that it might get unbalanced. You can see where the center of mass and center of lift are now, but that's bound to shift quite a lot as the fuel drains, and that's a problem. But uh, we'll try and keep her steady. Uh, I put lights on so that we can operate at night. So let's uh, let's. Well, actually, I should put one more light on. Come to think of it, so that I can see. Well, the the problem with the lights is that they always they're, they're so bulky. And if you try and sort of uh, sneak them in, sort of like, uh, you know, you can sneak them in like this, but then they're pointed in the wrong direction, right? I mean, what's the point of this? So, okay, well, I'll just have to deal with that. Let's take her out to the runway. Okay, so here we go, but before I do anything else, let's, the seismometer is very expensive, so let's log seismic data. And uh, we'll keep that because we're not going to be doing anything else except for the runway. So we've already got half of our required science, but uh, we'll, we'll do much more than that. Um, how about, uh, really, we should have parking brakes on right now. We probably haven't done gravioli here. Okay, well, let's transmit that data. We'll want the gravioli detector available. And log temperature. Once that data is, wow, it takes a lot of uh, electric charge. Okay, well, let's transmit the temperature data as well. 
Hmm. Of course, it'd be trivial to recover this, but you know, I want to do a full mission, and so we're just going to. Uh, we don't want to waste time with this. Okay, so here we go. I don't really have a landing beak. I should have planted a flag at the edge of the runway or something. But anyway. Uh, Alright, here we go. Okay, pulling up. Okay, we have lift off. Okay, let's try the nose cone thing. You run an atmospheric analysis. Okay, Kerbin Shores. Let's transmit from Kerbin Shores. Oh, wow, that's a lot of electric charge. Now the jets are uh, replenishing our electric charge, but I don't know how much. Well, I gotta be pretty close on the electric charge here. Okay, well we got that. Let's see, nope, done that already. How about the gravioli? Can't be done right now. Okay, let's uh, continue examining the flight characteristics of this thing while the electric charge replenishes. I, I, I'm going to want to bring the this back. I'm not going to orbit just yet. If this can get to orbit. It seems to want to flip out uh, if I pull up too much. So high angle of attack is not good for this thing. Not a surprise. Like I said, it's very unlikely to become unbalanced with uh, with the fuel drain. Where is the fuel draining from? These tanks. Well, let's let's shouldn't do too much. They're right on the center of mass, after all. Okay. Well, let's get some more atmospheric analysis. Kerbin's waters. Let's keep the Kerbin water one. Not the best plane I've ever... ever come up with. But then again, it is a drone, so... doesn't really doesn't like being anywhere away from its prograde vector okay Great vectors right there, you know you want to go to it. Okay, well, uh, I'm not gonna lose this data, so once I get pointed back up again. Right. Uh, 
Okay. Now what? Don't really see the runway very well. Seems like I'm high and a little bit north. Gotta have landing gear out. Okay, I think I saw it from this angle. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, this thing is a horrible, horrible lift. Of course, it is very heavy. With very little wing area. The problem is, if I pull up too much, it wants to kill me, so... Um, uh, okay, that's going to have to be a pretty fast landing. Oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, this is not the time to do this. Ah. Ah. I conclude that that was not a very good design. Definitely. But, let's see, uh, let's see how much science we actually managed to get out of that. Ah, not enough. Okay, um, hmm, back to the drawing board. I think I need to... More lift. More lift would be good. Okay, so I've made some changes. First of all, I've given it much more lift. I've tripled up the wings. I haven't added new control surfaces though. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I've action grouped the engine. I've doubled up the fuel lines so that they'll be balanced out, hopefully. And most importantly, I've decided to add a decoupler and parachutes to this part because this part is the most expensive part. If I separate this you'll see that it's almost it's more than half of the cost of the vehicle are those scientific instruments so if everything goes all wrong it's it would be best to just recover those um, so yeah uh, those are the the modifications this is our situation right now maybe I should move the these guys a little bit forward All right, so let's try this out now. I know it's it's. I I, I don't want to let this idea go. So uh, not not like that. So maybe maybe a little bit more lift will be the trick. We'll see. Okay. Well, uh, this time I'm going to get my my science, and then I'm going to try and bring it to orbit. And if it doesn't make orbit, I'll decouple the science and bring it back. So, here we are. We'll keep science again. Uh, we'll keep we'll keep the runway reading, and I don't think we're going to get uh, another thermometer reading anyway. Does atmospheric analysis from the runway? Okay. Well, uh, let's transmit that actually. Ooh, wonder why they make this atmospheric data take so long to transmit. Okay. Breaks off, throttles up, let's go. Okay. Oh, gotta get. Uh... No, we transmitted that one. Well, now the angle of attack is not so bad. Let's see. 
Oh, we transmit that one too. Oh no, there's still current shores. Waiting for water here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna transmit this one. Okay, here we go. 500 meters per second there. And we're probably running out of air soon. I only put the one intake per jet. Since I don't like intake spam or anything like that. This is really stretching the limit here. Okay, well, I'm an admittedly impatient sort, so once the intake air goes to 0 0.05 again, I'm going to light the rocket and turn off the jets. Okay. Oh shoot! Uh, why did symmetry hate me? Okay, now this is all bad. Uh, come on, shut down, shut down. No, that's not what I wanted. Stop that. Stop. Uh, I wish we could just right click on this and shut down from there. But no, that doesn't work. There we go. Alright, now. <laughs> so much for trying. Oh, okay, well. I accidentally staged instead of doing what I was supposed to do. <sighs> okay, well. Another failure on that one. But, but we'll at least get the science back. No, I can't run atmospheric analysis right now, otherwise we're going to... Well, I guess we can. We just can't transmit it. Okay, now we're going to keep data. The gravioli can't be done here. We'll just do it on the surface once we get to the water. Okay, now. Log gravity data. Keep that data. What else can we do? Log temperature data? Oh, let's me review data. Uh, let's reset experiment. Uh, log temperature. Yeah, let's keep that data. Uh, probably that data is worth more. Let's see. Review data. Uh, okay, let's keep that. Alright, so let's recover this. Okay, very disappointing, but at least we got the science that we wanted. So, uh, we are past 300, which was the requirement. Unfortunately, we lost some funds in the process. It was a very expensive craft, that drone. But, let's go over here and finally unlock the nuke. And now, I will turn to see what I can do with this. Of course, what we want is some sort of transfer stage, reusable transfer stage. But uh, exactly how we get into orbit and everything, I haven't decided yet. So let me work on that. Okay, so I think I've got something here. It's probably very dangerous and inadvisable, but let's try this out. Uh, so we've got a nuclear transfer stage here. Here's the nuclear atomic rocket motor. And you see, I've used the same method of... Uh, legal clipping, this did not involve uh, turning on part clipping in the cheats that I used in the lander as well and so we've got a 4.5 4 ton fuel tank uh, in the center here and then another 4.5 tons radially attached if you will 
Uh, we don't have the radio attachment point yet. We haven't unlocked that. So using this method to radial atta radially attach them, uh, the radial attachment point would stick them out a little bit further anyway. It's got a docking port on top. And then this little uh, fellow on top is actually a recovery pack. So if we ever want to bring this nuclear stage back down, we will uh, dock it with this recovery pack. And I think this recovery pack has enough uh, enough parachute uh, parachute stuff uh, to uh, carry it all back down safely, hopefully. So that is the idea. And of course, this little recovery pack can be used to recover other things that happen to have a docking port as well. Um, I've made some modifications to the launcher. First of all, I've added some more parachutes in the hope that they will help us recover this safely. Uh, I have uh, changed the landing struts to the heavier ones since we unlocked those recently but you will notice the biggest uh, change is that because this is so heavy now this is a 15 ton uh, payload rather than the 5 ton that we normally use uh, with these uh, recoverable launchers I have had to use discardable boosters and now I've uh, added token parachutes to the top of them but uh, probably that's not going to be good enough. Uh, well, obviously, since we don't have FMRS or some sort of other stage recovery mod, we can't uh, really recover them. But yeah, uh, it was necessary because otherwise we weren't going to be able to get into orbit. I still don't know 100% if we can get into orbit safely with all of this. Uh, there's plenty of possibilities that this is going to wobble about. There's, uh, there's all sorts of stuff here. Um, yeah, well let's find out shall we? Uh, we've got a huge budget now and we can afford to take some chances as we saw in the earlier part of the episode with the planes. I'm, I'm in a chance taking mood right now. Perhaps uh, if, we, if our budget finally uh, drops to a point where it's uh, a little bit dire I'll be driven to take some contracts finally. Uh, but yeah, alright so NTS recoverer on the OV6C and let's try it out okay here we go doesn't look half bad it's uh, standing on its whoops standing on its uh, landing struts maybe maybe it's standing on the boosters actually um, either way uh, I'm not going to throttle up on the because we've got the mainsail lighting but that's just for uh, gimbal authority so uh, we don't need to have that going full blast just yet. Alright, uh, well the clock's already started for some reason so uh, I think we should get going. This is going to be interesting. Wow. Heaviest rocket we've launched in this series to date. Okay, here we go. Oh, very close. Okay, and now we've got the velocity loss because, well, it's a heavy payload, like I said. When I say I need boosters, I mean it. Okay, we've got uh, positive acceleration again. Let's start the gravity turn. Sorry for the noise in the background. It is the weekend. People are doing yard work. Okay, I better not do this excessively. I don't want the prograde vector to get any bad ideas here. Let's be careful. Our acceleration is not that high right now. So there's no longer a single stage to orbit system. That's a shame, but but it is uh, much more cost efficient to use those boosters than to try and increase the size of the entire stage. Okay, I'm gonna cut it there for now. I think we should have enough fuel to make orbit, but I don't know if I can reserve enough to get us back down again. Well, let's find out. Okay, uh, that's orbit. Let's see how much fuel we have left. Ah, seems plenty. 
Plenty of fuel left. All right, so uh, the boosters worked. Uh, that was the idea. Good idea. We've got extra parachutes. Looks good. Let's try and get this all back down. So decouple. And the mission seems to have not lost its fairing. Is that a bad thing? Let's find out. Uh, oh, okay, that's how it works. I haven't used the this engine for so long that I have no idea how it works. I'm gonna keep its uh, recovery pack attached to it while it's here. Uh, but once, obviously, the goal was to avoid having to carry the parachutes and stuff uh, all over the place when it's uh, trying to push payloads to other destinations. I think this uh, booster, this nuclear booster, can carry five tons uh, for about four thousand meters per second of delta V. That's the goal. Uh, on its own I think it can make like 8,000 or 9,000. Okay, but our main main concern is this new version of our our launch stage. Yes, we discarded the solid boosters. That's about 7,600 credit, uh, funds, credits, whatever. So no, I shouldn't plot right now. Let me wait until the planet rotates and we will go around with it. Okay, let's try this. Still got plenty of fuel. Those boosters really helped out a lot. Okay, uh, actually let's uh, set Beacon Alpha as target. And we will now proceed. What? No, that's that. Uh, you're right. Okay. 50. Crossing onto the continent at 44 kilometers. Seem to be coming in a bit south. We can retro burn if necessary. I think we do need to. Well, we can uh, deploy parachutes here. Yep, I think we should. No. There we go. Got to take SAS off. Still seem to be landing long. No, I think uh, I think he'll pull us in. Okay. So I've returned to the vertical landing. Obviously, let's see if it works. Uh, just because it gives me an opportunity to use my engine like this right now. I think all I need to do with the engine is to dump the rest of the fuel maybe to lighten the load. But Oh boy, it's a uh, slope, it's slope. Ah, uh, gotta find out. Uh. Oh, it looks steady. Okay, 8.3 kilometers, recover. Well, I think that's the best recovery we've done yet. Uh, no science, obviously. Uh, 97.6. Uh, 66,571 funds, probably pretty close to the total uh, for the launcher portion as opposed to the mission portion. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Alright, so now we've got uh, a nuclear transfer stage in orbit, but we're not in a good position to do anything with the planets just yet. 
I think uh, maybe in the next uh, in the next episode, what we can do is do some Minma science spamming or something like that. Actually, uh, let's quickly take a look at the contracts to see if they suggest anything that I should do. But right now, uh, there is no transfer opportunity to any of the planets, so I would have to time warp in order to get to one. That's not a problem if that's all we can do. But if I can uh, find something else to do in the meantime, maybe that'd be better. Okay, so but let's go to the contract sc screen quickly. We've used a lot of funds. Uh, so we should try and get some of these. Um, all right, plan a flag on the moon. Sure, probably done that already. Uh, science. We've planted the flag on Duna and Ike even. Uh, yeah, sure. That's not even worth my time. Um, rescuing a Kerbal. Yeah, we'll aim for that. Test launch escape system in flight. Nah. Rapier engine. Wow, suborbital trajectory. That's a lot. Okay. Explore Eve, sure. Explore Gilly, sure. Explore Jewel, sure. These contracts are much nicer than the hard mode contracts in point two five. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway, uh, the rest of these are all uh, iffy, but uh, so among these things are things that we will intend to do in the next episode. So uh, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.